Hello Flickering Myth family and welcome to our channel. My name is EJ Marino and we have a new review. I'm going to be jumping into the comic book movie Venom. Let there be carnage. Recently on this channel I talked about the VHS era of horror films. It was a fun, over the top, bloody, weird time for the genre which really let some movies have a really interesting kind of go at it and I would say I think Venom Let There Be Carnage would fit into that era of VHS horror. This is pure B-movie trash and I love it for that. I will say I look Let There Be like Let There Be Carnage is not as bloody as it should be. This movie should be a bit more edgy and shocking and weird but what's presented is unlike any comic book movie we're getting these days. Maybe Suicide Squad the one from this year is close but I am really interested to see that Marvel is having a little bit more weird fun these days with their like MCU proper but with also things like Venom. This movie is not like any of the other Marvel movies. They all take themselves way too seriously and I'm not talking about like the Christopher Nolan era of taking themselves seriously. I'm just talking about like okay we are just doing comic book movies. Where's the schlock? Where is those fun like little oneers that aren't too serious that I don't don't need to like invest my entire life in this emotional journey. Give me trash and I got it with this. And again, these are all compliments. Venom 2 is just weird and like just I, I want to say shocking just because it's just not what I expected. This is like the Evil Dead 2 to this is Evil Dead 1. I would like it to be a bit weirder. Like if this could just be Marvel's basket case, I would be in love with it even more. But what's presented does just feel so different to the genre and I appreciate that. In the film Venom Let There Be Carnage, we see Eddie Brock and his symbiote returning named Venom. They're on a, a kind of a different journey this time. They're living with each other but their relationship is a bit strained. Venom really likes going out and being the lethal protector. Eddie is just like, can I get back to my normal journalist life? Like, I need to get some kind of focus here. You're driving me crazy. And speaking of crazy, they're involved with this serial killer named Cletus Cassidy. He is played by Woody Harrelson and he is disgusting and a little obsessed with Eddie. He also has a love interest that we'll just call Shriek in this review. That that is all kind of this weird like triangle going on. He's obsessed with Eddie because Eddie's allowed to get his story out. Eddie's just trying to avoid all of it and then you know once like uh, Carnage gets his girl it gets even wilder and I really enjoyed the, what, the story that's presented. There could obviously be more. At a 90 minute runtime, I felt this movie left me a bit hungry at the end still. There's some there, movies I, sh I should feel like I got a complete meal. I shouldn't need a snack after my movie. This movie needed a bit of a snack. It just wasn't as fulfilling as I would like it to be. But the story's fun watching Eddie try to do the investigation of the uh, carnage stuff. There is the really fun like Venom and Eddie breakup stuff where they kind of have some moments where they need to be apart from each other. Eddie uh, is kind of overbearing for Venom and Venom says I need to get out of the Eddie Brock closet. Legit quote from this movie, yeah, uh, Venom's a bit fun and sassy in this movie. He is like chickens named Sonny and Cher, compares himself to Barry Manilow, goes to a rave. Yeah, me and Venom had relatable content this like uh, uh, this film and I really liked it. I overall, like I like these stories. I think Carnage was done really well. I needed more of him. I would have liked it, and, you know, wreaking some Carnage and having a little bit more fun. But there is those moments there so I can't complain too much. And look, I liked all the symbiote CGI. It can get a little cheap looking sometimes, but it's a B-movie. I just called it B-movie trash. I'm not expecting it to look like Thanos in Infinity War, but I have to like be honest. I have to say it's not the most perfect film, but if you're looking for something not so serious, this kind of story with these characters all mixing together is perfect. Now that I have the review proper out of the way, let's get into that end credit scene. I'm really excited to get into some spoilers because I usually see these movies early and not a lot of talk about any of that. So this end credit scene, what does it mean? Let's explain it. So Eddie is uh, on a vacation with Venom at the end of the film. They kind of defeat the baddies and they said, let's have some time to ourselves. Let's do our own thing. And they're at a hotel. Venom starts kind of being like, I have not showed you the wonders of space and everything I know, so let's break that down and then, oh my goodness, I don't know if it's 
the opening of the multiverse between like Loki, Wanda, and Spider-Man, or if this is what Venom legit had stored up for him. I know it's more of the multiverse madness, but yes, Eddie is transported to a different room. This is not the hotel room he had. There is little like towel swans there and he's just like, yo, what is happening? Venom is freaking out. And on our TV, there was like a telenovela before. Now there is a news report by J. Jonah Jameson. The, uh, yeah, the, you know the one from J. Jonah, the where he outs Tom Holland's Spider-Man. And I'm like, oh my goodness, Venom now exists in the MCU proper. I'm sure it is just multiverse madness and this could fix itself and Venom can go off on its own or we could have a new adjusted reality for Marvel where things like X-Men and Venom kind of exist in the MCU that we know it. I have no idea what they're doing with this ending. This makes sense though, because there was a rumor that they wanted to delay this movie to January. It was going to be a bit more profitable. Well, this movie broke pandemic era records at the box office, so glad they did it now. And it also makes sense because they had to get this out before like No Way Home, because I think this is going to affect No Way Home. I think Venom is showing up. Is it going to be a big thing? No, I think he's going to be in the tail end of the movie where like everyone's coming together in the Spider-Verse, like the very uh, Avengers Endgame, but with the Spider-Verse characters, and that could be a crazy big deal. I'm really excited of what this end credit means, like the implications, like this could be a big deal. We could see Tom Holland and Tom Hardy ballad out as the sassiest men in the MCU, and I would be here for that. Are, are, how are you guys feeling? Like, I feel like some MCU fans are going to be like, yo, t keep your B-movie Venom out of our MCU. And I think some people like me are like, okay, I kind of like Venom that he didn't have to exist in the MCU. And it wasn't just something I needed to, again, take all my notes, something so serious. Now this, this ups the ante in a way that I'm curious. What do you guys think? Let's talk about this because this could get really spicy in the months going forward. All right, everyone, that is it for my review and breakdown of Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage. What did you think of this film? What do you think of this review? Let me know down in the comments below. Let's talk about this. There is a lot. The end credits, the movie itself, Venom being really, really fun and sassy. I had a good time with that. So let me know what you guys think. Comment down below. Subscribe to Flickering Myth because we make videos like this every single week and give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy. All right, everyone, let's talk about Venom down below.